Welcome to Virtualize Everything, where we strive to inform and educate the viewer about technology and technology-related topics around the world of virtualization software. Tonight's video presentation is going to be about installing web server software in a Linux container. The web server software we plan on using tonight is NGINX. We also plan to make this a multi-part series where we're going to install software like Apache and maybe a few other web server software. I also plan on diving into techniques for using multiple web pages on the same server. Now, this isn't super important with containers and if you're hosting internally. But what if you want to configure multiple pages inside your public DNS to use the same IP address? This can be done. So if you're looking to host multiple web pages on a single IP address, consider subscribing to stay tuned to videos like that coming in the near future. With that, let's get on to tonight's video. So I've created a container here called NGINX for us to work with tonight. If you don't already know how to create a Linux container using Proxmox, consider watching our video on setting up a container. To begin working with this container that we've created, we're going to press Start and Console just like we've done every other time. Now this container will boot up and we'll log in using root and our password. Now the first step we want to do is update all of our repositories and apply any software updates that need to be updated according to those repositories. To do this, we're going to string both of the required commands together using two ampersands. So the first command is going to be apt update and the second command is going to be apt Great, and we're going to add a dash y to answer the yes question. This container should be fairly up to date, so this should only take a few minutes. This might also be a good time to use the add user command to create a new user so that you're not just using root. This is a good security procedure that'll stop you from having your container's password brute forced, especially considering this container will be vulnerable to the internet when you're making an effective web server. So now that we're using the VE account, now we need to add the user to our pseudo group. To do that, we can use the same command of add user username, and we can just add pseudo at the end of it. This will add the VE user in our case, or the user that you created to the group pseudo, so that you can use pseudo to be a power user to conduct the next steps. So let's head over to that user and start using that username to do things. So now that we've restarted our container, we can log in with the new user account we created and use the command sudo pass wd-l root to remove the root user password so you can no longer log in with root. This is a good security feature and a basic security step for any container that will be vulnerable to the web. Now it's time to use sudo apt install nginx-y to install the web server. Now that we have the web server installed, we can find out the IP address of this container. Now, tonight for the video, I didn't create a fixed IP address, so we're going to need to look it up using the command IP ADDRESS or IP address, and we find out the containers at 1010251. Now we can copy that 
or just enter it in up here, HTTP colon slash slash 1010251, enter, and you can see that our web page appears. Now, that's great, but that's probably not the web page you want to display. So, let's head over to a file and make a few quick edits so you can see where to start creating your very own web page. So, we're going to use the cd command and we're going to go to var www slash html and running an ls we can see that the file we want to edit is called index.nginx dash debian dot html so we use a sudo nano copy this file name paste and enter now here is the web page that we see displayed in the web browser let's just change nginx to ve save it hit y and enter now refresh over here and we see up top that welcome to nginx has changed to welcome to ve so one last step let's close the console and I don't want to wait the time, so I'm going to do bad practices, but you probably should use the shutdown command to shut down your container. I'm just going to shut it down here. Now, all that's shutting down, we can head over to network, select our network, and hit edit. Change this to static, enter a new IP address, and the IP address to our gateway, and press OK. Now when we start up our container and log in, we're going to find that we now have a static IP address right there. This will make it much easier to configure your firewall and port forwarding settings to allow this container to communicate with the outside internet on port 80. So. If you're excited about some more of VE's upcoming content mentioned earlier in this video, or just want to support VE in bringing their viewers more content about virtualization, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Also, Virtualize Everything would like to announce that we have started using our web page. Our web page was created in January of this year, but we have not done very much with it. So if you'd like to view more videos or more topic about virtualization, consider going over there. We're also going to be doing write-ups, like the one here that I'll be following that I created just last night. You may even see some of these videos get posted early over here for special content, so maybe you want to check back early. Also, for commands, you will be provided with a link to every video that has a post so that you can view your commands and work with it right from our web page in a very detailed manner with descriptions. I'll do my best to write them as well as I can. As always, have a good night.